Hey guys, here's a, hopefully a quick tutorial today on the new feature of DF Architect module, and uh, this is FlameWave makes this. And this module does uh, a lot of things that are helpful, but one thing that's really cool that's new is the tile flattener option. And so I'm going to walk you through this. Well, what you're looking at here is a giant scene, right? So here's, here's a token right here, if that gives you a, a sense of scale. This is a giant scene of the docks. And you guys may think that you've seen this scene before because I'm using some of the same artistry to create it. But in fact, this scene was made with tiles. And then I layered on top some of these, uh, some of these buildings also from the, the modular system. So why is this a big deal, right? To be able to flatten tiles? Well, you can make scenes like this that are huge scenes that were made with a bunch of tiles. This, these are using uh, my system, but if you have seen my other tutorials in the past, you can drag in tiles from artists like Tom Cartos and Forgotten Adventures, and you can, you know, just add lots of stuff to a map that you want to tell a story around. And instead of having the performance demands of, you know, potentially hundreds of tiles, you can consolidate it into a single tile and make it highly performant and highly scalable for your players, no matter what kind of machines they're running. So, you know, whether you want to decorate a, a shop with, uh, you know, a bunch of uh, Tom Cartos magical weapons, or, you know, whether you want to create a clearing like this with, you know, some interesting things in wagons and maybe a defensible post in the middle here. These are all things that you can do now with DF Architect and the Tile Flattener to be able to you know, really build you know, large scenes with modular pieces. Let's walk through the menu of options here. So you can bake in your lighting for a particular scene. Uh, keep in mind though, that if the scene is transparent, then it won't be transparent when you add the lighting to it. You can render the background image. So you can say, look, I want to include the background image, or you can exclude the background image from your rendering. You can redden, render hidden tiles. So you normally leave this toggled off, because if you have tiles that you can hide, that means you can keep them from being rendered. So uh, normally speaking, you'll do that, but maybe you have some hidden tiles that you want to render in the ultimate image. You can hide animated tiles, which is super helpful because you're never really going to want to render a, you know, uh, flames or, you know, waving flag or things like that. You're going to want to keep those as their own tiles in the new scene. You can do the entire canvas or you can do selected tiles. This is super helpful when you want to do things like like say this was a bunch of different tiles that made up this roof. And in fact, they are, they're two different tiles. If I wanted to render them as the same roof, I could select both of them together and I could just render these two tiles. And, uh, and DF Architect even gives me the option to import just these two tiles back into the scene, I can delete this two that made, the, made up the, the new rendered tiles and I can now replace my roof uh, directly in the scene. I can render only floor tiles in case I'm working with the levels um, map and I just want to make sure I'm just getting floor tiles and not any of the foreground tiles. I can do uh, roof tiles only so maybe I just want to do roofs and then I can make a combination of those. Basically anything that I see or that I've selected that's not hidden or in one of these other categories. Uh, I won't talk about padding today because I haven't experimented with, much with it but uh, the big thing is you can also select the file format. So PNGs are, are actually really big files. I wouldn't recommend them. JPEGs are a little bit more compressed, but you're going to lose quality. What you want is to use Chrome when you're building, because then you can use this WebP format. And I, uh, for a big map like this, we'll set it at 50%, but you can go up to maybe 60% without losing any quality, and you can go down considerably if you want to save on a lot of space. In terms of setup, let's make sure when, before we start doing these things, let's assign a folder within DF Architect. So um, if we go into flattened tile images folder, um, we're going to want to pick a place where we're going to put the final images whenever we use DF Architect. And so you want to specify that in here. I'm specifying mine to my, my module. You don't want to do that. You want to put it into your world somewhere, most likely, because modules will get written over, uh, generally speaking. So once you save that, now we're ready to start to flatten the, the scene.
So we're going to open up our tile tool in DF Architect introduces this flatten tiles option here. I always recommend working with a copy of your map just in case you pick something wrong or something like that. So we want to render the background image. We're not going to bake in any lighting that we've got. And uh, we're going to ignore this. Actually, what we're going to do is we're going to um, hide some tiles because we don't want them to be rendered with the background. Maybe I want to move some of these boxes and barrels around later. So I'm just holding down select and I'm selecting a few of these tiles. And that's good enough for now. Anything that gets baked in is fine. I'm going to hide these tiles. Go back into my DF Architect tool. Uh, we don't have any animated tiles, but that's also a great thing to turn off. Uh, we're going to do the entire canvas. We're going to do the floor tiles only. And so now we're going to take all the floor tiles, whether we have them selected or not, we're going to render a single image. We're going to use WebP. And because this is such a big map, I'm going to reduce it all the way down to about 50% in terms of size. Might give you a warning if you're working with a really large file. And you need an internet connection to make this work. It's calling out to some libraries, so it uses them only when you need them. And you can see now it's uh, generated an image of my, my new combined file. And we'll take a quick look at this in a second. I can either save it to my computer or I can save it directly to the server. Now we have an option to replace the current scene's background, clone the current scene, and just replace the background image, and leave everything else alone. Or we can import it as a new tile into this scene. So what I want to do is clone this scene and set that new flattened image as the background. Don't click this too many times. You may click it and it doesn't seem like anything happens. Something's happening and you'll actually create multiple duplicates of your, your scene if you click it too many times. So here's the new one that I just created. Let's go there and see, see if it works. Let's call this one optimized. And you can see it's been trimmed all the way to the edges of the scene. Uh, these are no longer tiles anymore. This is just a background image. I open up my background image and I look at it. Here's the background image of this scene. And it's super efficient, but notice I also have all of my overhead tiles still. So everything still works, all of my multi-story scenes, they all still uh, function. I've just drastically reduced my uh, number of tiles that actually make up this scene. So the other use case for the tile flattener is with making your own assets out of other pieces. So all of these bridges are some of my assets for my modular bridge system where they're designed to be able to you know, make a bridge in any dimension and um, in any width, you know, any dimension, width or length. And so, uh, but what I want to do is turn this into a single tile. So I'm going to go to my architect, hide these animated flag tiles. Don't, I don't want to render those, just my selected tiles and just my floor tiles only. And of course should have that selected. Let's see how we do uh, WebP at 50%. There, there's my new consolidated piece, save it on the server. This time I'm going to import it as a new tile into the current scene. Since I have all these selected, I'm going to deselect all of my animated flags. I'm going to delete everything else. I'm going to drag my new tile into place. There we go. Now I have a single tile. I can even make that tile um, an overhead tile if I want to. Now I can like go underneath it. Lots of good stuff that we can do 
And I've got one more button that I can press that will delete all of the control tokens. And now I've got, if I did this to the rest of my scene and have a nice clean scene, this is probably made with maybe a hundred tiles. Then I'd have a complete, you know, consolidated scene with some flexible tiles on top of it that I can use. So ultimately you guys can build this, this enables you to build anything that you want. You know, you're looking at a totally different dock, different map layout, all the same assets through some boats and ships some stuff of mine, some, some Tom Cartel ships. And now I've got, you know, the same assets with a completely different storytelling option here. And so when you guys, you know, start to learn how to build with tiles, again, using stuff from Tom, uh, using things from me, you can, you can build, you know, really anything, right? So, you know, I wanted to build a warehouse on the docks that had a, a tavern underneath it. And, you know, I can do that, right? And I'm now under in the basement of this, uh, of this tavern because... I use tile flattener to basically assemble the, you know, the scene that I really wanted to build. So hopefully you guys uh, enjoy this. Let me know in the comments what kinds of ways that you might use this. And by all means, come by my Discord and show show off some of the stuff that you guys are making uh, with tile flattener. And uh, and yeah, otherwise, in the meantime, have fun making your maps.